We'll talk plenty of NFL throughout the course of the show. I'm now into the real off season, which is post draft, uh, and the Lakers. Lakers. Also in the real Lakers. off season. I, I sensed a pall over the studio Lakers. this morning. A lot of deep, well, deep sadness among you guys. Del Tufo was pouring one out for Laker flag, Laker car flags. Car flags. Uh, may they rest in peace yeah. for the next nine months. I mean, uh, look, man. <laughs> people watch this show. No, there's no real sadness. There's no yeah, sadness, TJ. And you know what? That was it, the joke. It's Denver's <laughs> world, and we're just living in it, man. Like uh, nuggies, inevitable. But yeah, why don't you explain I that again with those inevitable. nuggies? I don't think I wouldn't say inevitable. Yeah, you calling an upset in the next round against the T Wolves? The T. If you watch the Timberwolves right now, <laughs> yeah. and you watch the Nugget, I mean, the Nuggets trailed most of that series against the Lakers. I don't know that you look at the Nuggets as being an invincible team, do you? Jamal uh, Murray made it happen last night on a, on a strained calf. Were made they, a couple were, of big were shots. They, were they losing the whole series, or were they just, uh, you know, lying, going through the paces, lying knowing that wait, this is going to be easy going enough? Going through the motions, and then with five minutes to go, we'll turn it on and beat you. you. I mean, you got the absolute... I mean, that was LeBron fighting for his life last night, and in game four, too. This was not a, hey, I know I'm done. This is a... I know I've only got so many shots at this. He wouldn't say after the game exactly what the future was. There's a lot of – let's play actually LeBron last night. He's asked about his future with the Lakers and in the NBA. Let's go ahead and uh, play that right now. Couldn't be any closer to when you just got off the floor, but have you given any initial thoughts of what comes next this summer or for next season? Uh, no, I just want to get on to the family, honestly. Um, um, start looking at the schedule, obviously. I got – uh, you know, my son, one of my boys is just trying to decide if he's going to, you know, enter the draft or go back to school. i got another kid that's uh, playing AU ball right now. My daughter is playing uh, volleyball, um, and my wife is doing so many great things. So it's about family right now. And then in a couple months, i got to go to Vegas for training camp. <laughs> so, you know, i got to rest my body for, for USAB. But um, you know, that's kind of the initial thoughts. Tonight, was there any thought at all that, you know, this could have been your last game with the Lakers? Um, I'm not going to answer that. All right, first of all, I don't believe for a second LeBron has not thought about the future. Everything in his entire adult life has been calculated in terms of where he's going to be playing. Everyone knew he was going to the Lakers a year in advance. The decision was on national TV. He's 100% figured out what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. The Bronny James component in this, I, I find fascinating for a variety of reasons. For one... I know he had the, the heart condition, mm -hmm. he missed time, he came back, wasn't necessarily himself. Well, he averaged a couple points a game, right? Yeah. In his college season. Yeah, mostly a role player, just kind of finding his way out there. Uh, just lucky to be out there, I think, to be honest. Uh, but then, you know, a lot of people have thoughts on him, on if he can – I mean, LeBron didn't do many favorites by saying, look, he's better than, you know, X amount of players in the league right now. It's like, okay, but – it's it's a big question mark. If if you're the Lakers, are you going down this road for another three years? It's a max extension for LeBron James. You don't know if he's got three years left, but if you're going to bring him back, say he opts out of his contract, which based on the people who actually report on the NBA, which is not me, sounds likely that it goes that direction. Do you bring him back, draft his son, and think the product that you saw on the court during the playoffs and throughout the course of the season when you're a, what, 43-45 win team and then get into the playoffs and give the Nuggets a run but weren't able to go over the top. Do you go further and double down on an old roster? Anthony Davis is locked up for like four more years. Do you double down on that and give LeBron the kid? And Or if you're the Lakers at some point, do you just say, we're good? You're still the Lakers. Yeah. You're going to be the biggest story in the NBA. We're going to be talking about you whether you have LeBron or not. Do you go down there from a competitive basketball only standpoint? Do you continue to double down on it and say, if LeBron wants me back, we want him back? That, I mean, Tom, that's such an excellent question. You know, when Kobe got his big money, created a little bit of controversy, right? Some people were like, yeah, we're giving this for everything he's done and, and accomplished for us. But other fans are looking at this like, wow, this is going to like handcuff us going forward. And it did for a few years. So. That's an excellent question. We've never seen a player at this age do the things that LeBron's capable of doing. And look, does he have three more years in him? I, I wouldn't bet against him. I don't know about this high. Like, look, he had a great season 
for a 30, you know, nine year old player. We've never seen somebody put numbers up like this before. But you're right. Three more years. Man, you you're you're risking you're risking a lot by doing that. And I'm glad I don't have to make the decision. Are they, are they serious about winning? That's the question. Or do they just comfortable with it's LeBron James? It's or the they show. Com- or they want the star it's power the and the show and the, all the headlines that go with it. See, that's, Chris, I'm, I'm glad that's you two said questions. that, bro, because that's how I feel about the Cowboys, as you know right now. Sometimes I'm like, <laughs> are they really that concerned about winning? Right. Or do we like the fact that we're the most valuable franchise and Talk we're the me. lead block on every show, whether we deserve to or not, and the, the prestige? So what you said, I the think Lakers get Kobe Bryant accurate. all that money in the last two years of his career, and you know what it got him? 38 combined wins in two years. Mm-hmm. Are the Lakers serious? I, I would say they've probably maxed out as good as they can be. But look, they made the Western Conference Finals last year. Seems like that was kind of a fluke. Uh, and so in the, in the other years, first round exits. Or not making. Or, or they didn't make at it least at all. If you're so, the Cowboys, you at least can say you're taking strides forward. Now they play an abysmal game at home against the Packers in the playoffs last year. But at least again. you can say for Mike McCarthy's first year, through last season in terms of the win total, in terms of the level at which Dak is playing. Mike McCarthy calling the plays last year. Dak got that much better. It was a complete disaster from every angle in the playoff game. There's nothing you could do about it. But it's not like the Lakers got out here and they had won 60 games and then lost in five in the playoffs. No, this was a team that was limping toward the playoffs and then go out in five games, gave the Nuggets a hard time, but still weren't able to close those games. It's just, it's hard, I think, when you're talking about building winning franchises here to to mix in the idea of, like you guys said, the branding aspect of it. Are you happy that, well, no matter what, we put the star on somebody's helmet, they're going to be able to make all the marketing money, we're going to be highly valuable, we're going to be the centerpiece of the show all the time. The Lakers are always going to be the centerpiece of the show. Yep. If they go into a rebuild, yeah, are they on national TV less? Sure. Is every single show talking about them like we are right now every single day? <laughs> Maybe not to that same <laughs> degree. I, I think that, I mean, something has to change for the Lakers. It In all likelihood, it involves Darvin Ham no longer being the head coach. That's the simplest solution. But I don't know that that fixes. Getting rid of Darvin Ham doesn't suddenly, you know, make LeBron James into Benjamin Button and he starts getting younger and playing better. It's not going to help De- uh, D'Angelo Russell make a shot. Like getting rid of the coach. Did you see D'Angelo Russell's comments after the game last night? No. Hell of a season for D'Angelo. Went third person. Hell of a season. <laughs> Said as long as, and I'm paraphrasing only slightly here, it's as long as my family, my family and friends text me saying what a great job I did, that's all I need. Oh. So that's good. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.